Good evening, Jesus Image Church. We welcome all those joining us online this evening. Can we just begin to posture our hearts towards the Lord? Psalm 24, 6 says, This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and the King of glory shall come in. O Lord, we welcome you, Jesus. We welcome you, King of glory. You're our heart's desire, Jesus. You're our hearts to see your face, Jesus, to simply see you to see your eyes that blaze with fire, Jesus, your hair like wool, to see your face that shines like the morning sun, Father, we long for you, Jesus, your desire, Father, so we ask that you would come, come tonight, Father, come, come like you have before, Jesus, but come in a greater measure, Jesus, you are worthy, Jesus, you're so worthy, Jesus, we love you, Father, amen. Wash our sins away. And brought us into light of day. To him be the glory. To him be the power. To him be all majesty and all dominion forever. We'll praise the ever living world.
as you guys keep ministering to the Lord. I just wanna read this over you real quick. We're gonna stay here for just a moment longer, but I kept hearing this passage in my heart and I had to find out where it was. But in Isaiah 54, it says, Sing, O childish woman, you who have never given birth, break into loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem. Come on, church, agree with this. You who have never been in labor for the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband, says the Lord. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home and spare no expense for you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. Fear not, you will no longer live in shame. Someone needs to hear that tonight, fear not. You will no longer live in shame. Do not be afraid. There is no more disgrace for you. You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and the sorrows of your widowhood. This was the part I kept hearing in my spirit. For your creator will be your husband. Another passage says it's like this. Don't you know your maker is your husband? Don't you know your maker is your husband, the King of kings and the Lord of lords? You will no longer remember the shame of your youth and your sorrows of widowhood. Again, for your creator is your husband. His name, I added that. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. He is your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of all the earth. I feel like someone needs to hear this tonight. For the Lord has called you back from your grief as though you were a young wife abandoned by your husband, says your God. For a brief moment, I abandoned you, but with great compassion, I will take you back. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just posture our hearts just to love him for a moment? We love you, Jesus. I just keep hearing that again. You are our maker and our husband, Lord. What an amazing God you are, Lord. You made us, you created us, and you love us, Jesus. As a husband loves his bride, Lord, and you're coming back, you're coming back, Lord, to rule and reign, Jesus. Oh, Lord, forevermore, you are highly exalted, high and lifted up. Just as we transition here, I'm gonna give it to Ryan here in a moment. But I just, just open your heart to the Lord just for a second. Will you tell him how much you love him? We let thanksgiving and praise come out of your mouth as Michael was saying this morning. Just thank him for all he's done. I know many of you have gone through just tragic years, but God has been faithful. You're still here, you're still standing, you're still here, you're still staying steadfast and that's what matters. It doesn't matter what you've been through, it matters that you're still standing strong on the rock, which is Jesus, the rock that which we build our church and which we stand upon. So Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, that you never abandoned us. You didn't leave us, Lord, as orphans, Jesus. But you love us, God, with an everlasting, unconditional love, Lord. We love you, Jesus. It is our joy. We will serve you forever and ever and ever and ever. We will not be moved. We will not be moved. We thank you, Jesus, for the cross, Lord. We thank you, God, for the blood of Jesus, Lord, that covers us, Lord, and our families, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for what you did for us, Jesus, that you pulled us out of the pit of despair, Lord, that you saw us through, God. We couldn't hide anything from you, and you took us as we were, God, Jesus, broken, broken children, Lord, in need of a Savior, God. And we still need you today and every day, Jesus. We always need you, Lord. You're so worthy, God, so worthy of our praise. Holy King, righteous one, beautiful Savior, crucified Christ, risen, risen, risen one. We thank you, God. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, just tell him you love him for a moment. We love you. Yeah, you can clap. You can do whatever it is you want to do. We love you, Jesus. Beautiful King. Beautiful King. That shame dies tonight in Jesus' name. Shame has no place here. No place, no place. It's covered by the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father. Mm -hmm.
I just felt, um, Amy Mashu, will you come up here? Gray, I'm sorry. I want to break the shame. The Lord, I should say, is going to break that shame off of you. And if there's anyone in the room, we're all family here. If you still deal with shame, I want to pray. I'm going to have Amy pray over you. If there's anyone in the room that deals with shame, if you just want to lift your hand and if you're by that person, yeah, God bless you guys. I, I dealt with shame for years after I gave my life to Jesus. And that's no way, as we just read in the scripture, that's no way to live. Shame has to go. That's not you anymore. That person's dead. You know what I mean? You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. So again, if you are by someone, if you deal with shame, lift your hand. That's going to die tonight in Jesus' name. If that's you, if you're up in the balcony and Amy, I just want you to just pray over them. And we're going to agree as a church family that that goes. And if you gave your life to Jesus and you, you still deal with the thought, even the memories of your past have to go, even the memories in Jesus' name. And if you're in the room, just stretch your hands. And if you're watching online and you struggle with this, just lift your hands to Jesus and he's gonna set you free from that shame right now. That shame that has been completely making you bound inside. That shame that is reminding you of your past. And like I said, the sun sets free is free yes. indeed. That shame has to go in Jesus' name. So Amy, if you would pray. Yes, Lord, we just thank you, Father, that you lift every heavy burden. You lift every heavy yoke. Lord, that we cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Lord, I declare it says in your word, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we agree that those who came to the altar, those who were in the room, there is no condemnation in the name of Jesus. So we break shame right now shame is not your portion lord we break guilt we break fear right now lord yes. father we thank you lord for yes. the spirit of joy in the room lord yes. we thank yes. you for the yes. spirit of of laughter lord that they would laugh like they've never laughed before lord we thank you that they can rejoice true joy lord you are true joy that will live inside of them lord we thank you jesus who the sun sets free is free indeed and we proclaim as a church family that you are free you are set free that the chains of grief the chains of shame the chains of guilt are no more in the name of Jesus Lord we plead the blood of Jesus over their minds over their hearts Lord Father we, we take every thought captive and we make it obedient to Christ in the name of Jesus I thank you for a zeal for you Lord a zeal Jesus we thank you, Lord. We thank you. You said it, it is finished on the cross. You took shame on the cross. Can we just believe that, you guys? He said it is finished. He said it is done. That when he died on the cross, he took shame with it. He took guilt with it. He took condemnation with it. It is not our portion. And so we agree in the name of Jesus, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for freedom. Thank you that they will walk and not grow weary. They will run and not be faint, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That is who you are, Lord. That is who you are, Jesus. You are the Prince of Peace, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. And Lord, we thank you. You're redeeming the time. Yes. Everything that was lost, Lord, yes. will be replaced and more, Lord, yes. more, Lord, more. Because yes. you don't only replace things that are broken, God. You give more and above our expectation, God. So, Lord, I thank you that you're redeeming the time in Jesus' name. You're restoring the lost things in Jesus' name. You are making those things that were dead come to life right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Restore marriages, broken homes, broken families, broken mindsets, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, like Amy said, restore joy and laughter and peace. These are fruits of the Spirit and they belong to your children, Lord. So we thank you, Father. Once was lost will be found in you, Jesus. We thank you, Father. And restore the broken mindset of marriage. I just feel like there's people in the room and watching online that you have a broken mindset of what marriage should look like. In marriage, we have the perfect picture 
of Jesus with us. This is what marriage is and marriage is beautiful. So Lord, I thank you that you're restoring the mindsets, the trauma, the broken mindsets that marriage is not beautiful because you showed us what it is to be a husband, Lord. And we're your bride. So that fear of getting married, that fear of failure, Lord, let it go right now in Jesus' name. That fear of being a bad parent, let it go right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. You make all things new. That's who you are. That's who you are. You restore all things that were lost, Jesus. We trust you, Lord. Stir up those dormant wells, Lord, that have been laying dormant for far too long. Restore those dreams in our hearts, God, that we put aside. Restore them, but let them only be raised up with you, Jesus. For you, for you, for you. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We give you this, Lord. We give you this, Lord. We give you it, Jesus. Our pain, Lord, our disappointment, God, we give it to you, Lord. We lay it at your feet, Jesus. It's not ours to carry, Lord. Holy Spirit, help us to let go and give it to Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Can we just let these sweet ones know how much we love them? This is beautiful what the Lord has done. Um, I'm not gonna invite Esther up here. She's gonna receive offering. You guys are welcome to go back to your seats. Uh, tonight's gonna be a really special night. Uh, Michael and my dad were gonna tag team, which would have been fun just to watch. Um, but Michael started not feeling well um, when we went home from church this morning. So my dad is here. And I just feel like God is gonna really do an amazing work tonight in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Love you, Esther. Jesus. Lord, we love you. Lord, we don't want to talk about you like you're not in this room, Jesus. We just set our attention on you, Lord. Thank you for your nearness. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for all you have done, Lord. I just, I pray, God, that we would respond rightly to you, Jesus. We thank you for coming into the room, God. Help us to respond rightly to you, Jesus. You are worthy of all praise and honor and glory. It is all yours, Jesus. I just pray, God, that we would begin this new year, Lord, not holding anything back. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are going to go into tithe and offerings, and this is one of my favorite times in the kids' ministry. I get the honor of getting to be a part of uh, watching the kids grow and giving to the Lord. And I remember when we first started, I would go into the nursery, the youngest age group, zero to two, and I would have two-year-olds running to the offering bucket well, waddling some of them and just throwing $20 bills in there, like these big amounts. And they were so happy and so joyful as they gave. And I remember it just moved my heart because of the freedom that they had. They, it was, nothing was attached to them because it wasn't theirs. It was such a reality. It was their parents' money. So for them, it was nothing. They would just run up and throw it in there. One kid, I think he dropped a 50, and we were like, oh, oh my gosh, like, are you supposed to give this? And I was like, do you think they, and it was like, but they don't, they weren't attached to the money because of the awareness of who gave it to them. And it was a joy to give. And so today I just want us to come in with joyful hearts as we enter into this new year um, that we would give our first fruits to Jesus who gave everything. And um, I wanna read uh, 1 Chronicles 16. And I wanna start in 28 and it says, Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. 
Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come before Him. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. And I just pray that in this building, we can just truly stay with our whole heart, that the Lord reigns over every area of our life, that we would not withhold anything back from Him. So I just wanna invite you guys as we're stepping into this new year, that let's step into this new year with extravagant, a generous heart to the one who gave everything. And so um, if you guys need an envelope, I would just like to encourage you to raise your hands and an usher can find you. We also have texts to give on the screen. And if you're watching online in the link below, you can click the um, link there or text the number to give. And I just wanna pray. And I just wanna encourage you if you have your, um, your offering, if you could just hold on to it and that we would just truly give to the Lord. So Lord, we just love you. We thank you, Jesus, that you withheld nothing from us. Lord, we just come as a grateful people and we give you this, our tithes and offerings, God. Lord, we love you, Jesus. I pray that you would bless every person in this room, God. Let our hearts be postures to be ones who give radically. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're in the room, you guys can rush the buckets.
lost in that song, couldn't we? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, Steph and Miss Kathy, come back soon. We love you. Well, my dad is somewhere back there, so let's welcome. This is always like the mystery. When's he coming out of the curtain? There you are. Let's welcome my dad. Thank you, thank you. Please be seated. My girl looks like a farmer. <laughs> Goodness gracious. You like, you like to dress like that? That's, that's what I just told her. I said, why are you looking like a farmer for? How you doing? Great New Year. Say amen. amen. I love it. One day I'm going to have to lay hands on you that you may be delivered from these holy pants. <laughs> Dear Lord, this is church. And the people said, amen, please somebody back me up, will you? There's another one who needs deliverance. <laughs> no, I, th I think you all look fine, guys. I'm sorry. Hello, Robert. How are you? Well, I'm glad you made. Well, happy New Year to you. So let me, let me hear you. Uh, let me just, uh, this, this man actually played in one of the meetings recently. Strings, I, you know, I like strings. Yeah, there you go, brother. Then we'll, 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 we'll pay you now. <laughs> this will be a wild night, I can tell you right now. <laughs> so you're all, you're all ready, right? Look, look, I'm just, I'm just myself. Dear Michael, our wonderful Michael is not feeling well. So, Let's just pray that the Lord will touch him, can we? Lord, thank you for your healing power. Bless Michael, Lord, with strength and health. And bless the family in Jesus' wonderful name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. I believe the Lord's going to give us a fantastic year. So let's stand up and thank him for it. Thank God for his mercies. Lord, we bless your holy name. Yes, give the Lord a mighty hand. He deserves it. Lord, I thank you for what you're about to do in our life this year. I pray you'll bless your people here at Jesus' image. Bless this year with your mighty, abundant blessings on them increase each one of them bless them with abundance in spirit in health bless the work of their hands let this be a better year than we even can believe for in Jesus name come on lift your hands for you are great you do me recall so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you For you are great You do me recall so great There is no one else like you There is no one else for you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. For you are great, you do me recall so great, for there's no one else like you, for there's no one else like you, for you are great. Thank 
you, Lord, for what you're about to do in our hearts and lives tonight. We give you all the glory. And God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. What happened to my daughter? I want her to come back. She needs this message too. Thank you, Robert. Bless you. It's playing by itself? Wow. I don't know what you did, but that thing is alive. <laughs> Can we go? You're, you're, you're going to enjoy tonight. How many are new here? How many have never been here? Stand up. Okay. Yeah, let's give him a big God bless you. That's awesome. Welcome to all of you. Why don't you, those around them, stand up and shake their hands and tell them how good they look. <laughs> and just wish them a happy new year. And... Hello, Debbie. How are you doing, darling? You look great. And Leander, you look marvelous yourself, brother. <laughs> Beautiful. I love coming here because you're my favorite people. And I love speaking at the school because they're my favorite students. And this week, I guess, school begins on Tuesday, on Tuesday. How many of the students are here? Yay. You're, you're, you're something else, all of you. I want to talk to you about what I believe the Lord wants us all to do this year. And I want to talk about the importance of surrender and what it means to surrender. So let's go to 1 Kings 20, uh, verse uh, chapter 20. And you know what? Um, I'd like someone to read for me. Where is, where is it? There you are. Can, can you get a microphone from somewhere? All right, that's great. And what happened to... Uh, what happened to uh, Chad? He was supposed to be sitting there. There you are. Bless your darling heart. Okay. All right. Um, let's read First Kings 20, verse 1 through verse 4. Now, this is a wicked king named Ahab speaking to another wicked king of Syria named Ben-Hadad. And he says these words to him. So, Listen to the words. Okay, go ahead, please. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his hosts together, and there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots, and he went up and besieged Samaria and warred against it. And he sent messengers to Ahad, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto them, Thus saith Ben-Hadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also and thy children, even thy goodliest are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. Now can you imagine Dion, some king saying that to his enemy? All I am, all I have is yours. So... If a wicked king can say that to another wicked king who really wants to take all his possessions, how much more should we say these words to our wonderful heavenly father? All I am, all I have is yours. Can you lift your hands and say those words to him right now? Dear Jesus, all I am and all I have is yours. One more time, say that. Dear Jesus, all I am, all I have is yours. Now, this wicked king, Ahab, was surrendering to another wicked man. So, the Christian life cannot be a Christian life without surrender daily. Daily. You know, it, it'll take you a lifetime to learn that because it's a daily walk. It's a daily surrender. And if it's not a 
life of surrender, it is not a Christian life. Um, read for us Matthew 16, Dion, and read verse 24 through 26. Because I want to show you something so wonderful that the Lord said here. I'm going to explain it to you. I'm going to have a little talk with you, basically. We're going to have a heart-to-heart talk about what does it mean to surrender? I mean, we all like to sing the song, I surrender all, and we forget what that means when we walk out. Or we don't really know what are we singing or how to even do that. How do you surrender? Well, I'm going to show you what the Bible says. Okay, let's go. Matthew 16, 24 through 26. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is it a prophet, a man profiteth, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? It is impossible to surrender to someone you don't know. Only a deep relationship allows you to surrender to someone that you know. So now the Lord says, read that again, Dion. Very powerful words, very, very important to all of us. If any man, go ahead. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Now let's stop with this. If any man will come after me, let him deny the flesh. The flesh cannot surrender. There's no good thing in it to give to God. Frankly, he doesn't want it. Self cannot be saved. Self is your biggest enemy, more deadly than the devil. You heard me right. You can resist the devil and he'll flee. You cannot resist self. Because self doesn't flee. Self has breakfast with you. (laughs) Lunch with you. Dinner with you. Goes to bed with you. Wakes up with you. Self cannot be resisted. So think about this. I can resist the devil with, thus saith the Lord. And he goes. You can't say that to self. That old man, the flesh. It's called this body of corruption. Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of corruption and death? So we have a big enemy. It's self. Now, what Jesus is saying in Matthew 16 uh, 16, is that self has to be out of the way. So read that again. It's very important we get that that truth here about how to get that self out of the way. How do we do that? One more time. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Now you cannot deny self until you become pliable. Now pliable means that there's nothing in you that is Hard-hearted. Okay. And I'm not against education, but I want to say something clearly. People ask me this all the time. How do I surrender? I said, I cannot show you. Because for you to surrender, God has to show you. Now, who surrenders best? A child or an adult? You got it. A child will run and jump on you, believing you'll catch him. He knows that child of yours, baby boy, baby girl, when I see daddy over there or mommy, I'm going to run and jump. And they're going to catch me. So as we grow, we lose that trust. We don't trust as easily as we grow older. 
And some people become so highly full of the world, God cannot use them. Catherine Kuhlman used to say, there are some people so educated, God cannot use them. Because they're no longer pliable. So Jesus said, we have to become like children to enter the kingdom. Children means trusting the Lord in everything. That he will never fail you. Never. This childlike faith, people don't talk about that anymore. So let me give you a story of a, of a dear lady I knew, was a friend of mine, named Rita Lacour. I've told that story around the world, but maybe some of you have not heard it. Rita Lacour was a, a, a French-Canadian lady living way up in Quebec, in Canada, French Canada. She had MS. A friend of hers, a Mrs. Champagne, I actually knew her too. She was a very red-faced red -faced woman, very red. Her, her, her face looked like a red tomato every time I saw that woman. And uh, she used to go to Catherine Kuhlman for uh, the services. So she comes back to Quebec. She was a very ha-ha-ha lady. She always laugh and make jokes and feed you a lot of uh, thick food with a lot of cream in it. And so, but she was a very lovely lady. I still can see her with red hair, red face. Imagine a name, Champagne, like Champagne. Yes, calling her, hello, Mrs. Champagne, how are you doing today? Your mom was telling me today about a preacher named Christmas, Mr. Christmas, Pastor Christmas. I said, I don't know what that man does on Christmas Day. Hello, Mr. Christmas, how are you doing today? Happy Christmas. My goodness gracious. Anyway, so this, this lady was called Champagne or Champagne. And she comes to her friend. By the way, all you sweet people don't mind me. That's just me. So I'm from Israel. <laughs> You'll never change me. And to pray for me, it's too late. <laughs> That's the way I am. I lost my filter a long time ago, and I love it. So you have to get used to it. So anyway, so she comes to her friend, uh, Rita, who's on a wheelchair. She says, listen, I just came back from a service of this woman named Catherine Kuhlman in Pittsburgh. You've got to go there. God will heal you there. Well, her husband, Jacques, was, her husband was a tough guy. And he was a hard worker. He worked in some big factory. And he just wouldn't go with her. And uh, she said, listen, you have to take me down to Pittsburgh. Now, that's a long drive from Quebec City down to Pittsburgh. Well, she just every day would ask him, please take me, please take me. Finally, he took her down. They get to Pittsburgh. This is a young woman in her late 20s with little children, two, I think two little girls, on a wheelchair. She had never been able to even carry her own children. And her husband now takes her down to Pittsburgh. She can't get in. Place is packed. So she's crying outside. She's been with me on This Is Your Day and told the story. She's sitting outside crying. An usher sees her and brings her in. He said, listen, I'll give you my seat. So now she comes in and Catherine was very dramatic. I'm sure you've seen the, those clips, you know. She was way more dramatic in person than she was on the clips, trust me. Because she talked really like, hello there! <laughs> First time I ever saw her on, on TV, she said, hello there, have you been waiting for me? And I thought, <laughs> what? I'm like, shake you up a little bit. She was very dramatic, but mightily, God, mightily used of God. So now she's up there ministering, and Rita thinks, ah, She's paying all these people to come up and say they've been healed. And then at the end she thought, you know, that's not possible. You can't fool that many people. And now she looked up. I'm, I'm just showing you this childlike faith, that pliability that God needs in all of us. She had never heard the name Jesus in her Catholic church. 
She was a devout Roman Catholic in Quebec. Her priest never mentioned the name Jesus ever in church. So she looks up and she said, Jesus, I have never talked to you. I don't know you. And here's what she said to him, but I know your mother. <laughs> so cute, you know? I don't know you, but I know your mother. Because all the priest talked about was Mary. And then she said, if this woman up there is telling the truth, would you heal me, please? And she felt fire go through her body. And she began pulling on her husband. Chuck, Chuck, something's happening to me. Oh, he said, don't embarrass me. They're going to throw us out of here. Because Catherine was very, very fussy about noise, you know. And she said, no, 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 you can't, you can't do that. She said, something is happening to me. I feel it. You be quiet. And she said, Jack, there's only one way to find out. She, she stood up, never to go back in that wheelchair again. <laughs> Healed completely. Now to show you, here's a lady who did not even know the Lord, but who was so childlike. God loves childlike people. Because he loves the meek, it says in the Bible. So that, that kind of simplicity is lacking today in the church. And you cannot deny self if you are so full of self. Did you hear that? You've got to be free from that old nature that has to figure everything out. Show me, let me, prove it to me. I don't believe it. I, I got to see it. That's self. Self has a lot of problems with faith. I want to say it again. Self has a lot of problems with faith because it just doesn't live by faith. Self doesn't know what faith is like, what faith is. Self demands the natural. Show it to me. Let me feel. Let me touch. Let me handle. Let me see if it's real. I'm not going to believe it till I see it. That's self. So Jesus says, deny your self. You can't follow. You cannot follow the Lord in the flesh. It's impossible. Because the flesh, Paul said, there's no good thing in the flesh. No good thing in it. The only thing you can do with the flesh is crucify it. So Jesus said, one more time, Dion, please. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and... And take up his cross and ah, follow me. Ah, take up his cross. A lot of Christians see the cross as a past tense experience. I was saved 20 years ago. I was saved 10 years ago. No, no, no. Jesus said, take the cross with you. Take the cross with you. Carry that cross with you. Death is a daily experience. Do not be conformed to this world is a possibility to be conformed, to go backwards. Why would Paul write that in Romans if it's not going to happen to somebody? Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And transformation means following the Lord and knowing the Lord and being in his proximity. You can't follow someone you can't see. I heard Ms. Schumann say something powerful one day. She said, if you come into the proximity of his presence, you will be healed. It says in, the, in, the, in God's word, and they followed him and he healed them. They followed him, meaning close enough to touch him. They followed him and he healed them. Why? They were close enough to be touched or to touch him. They were in proximity of his presence. Where Jesus is, sickness cannot live. Where he is, sickness cannot exist. 
So, deny self. And then die to the things of the world. A soldier of Jesus Christ cannot be entangled with the affairs of this life. That's what the Bible says. I'm doing a lot of Zoom meetings now with different preachers around and and uh, a group of preachers asked me a few days ago, what is the danger in the church in America today? I said, politics. Jesus never called us to be involved in politics. That's the danger in the church today. They become too political. Jesus is a Republican, supposedly. (laughs) Or an American. No, he's not a Republican. He's not a Democrat. He's not an American. He's God. God Almighty. He belongs to all. The whole world. He came to die for the world. But now, sadly, in America, Jesus is a Republican and an American. That's not in the Bible. He is our life and all we have. The Lord himself. We live for him. We die for him. None other but Jesus. And God's people said? Amen. One of these days I'm going to, well, maybe I should teach you a, an old song. You are my everything, you are my all. You are my everything, both great and small. I taught the school that, and the musicians were having a hard time coming up with it. <laughs> you gave your life for me, made everything new. You are my everything, and I love you. Another time, brother, I'm teaching right now. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, you picked it up though. You know it. Oh Lord, bless him with a mansion and glory for that. Amen. It's like first guy I meet that knows the song. You're an old timer. Yay. Hey, maybe we can teach it to him tonight. Yes, you got it. So back to self. Deny self. Carry your cross and then you can follow me. So you cannot follow the Lord and surrender to him if self is in the way. And you're not pliable. You you cannot follow the Lord if you are not willing to die to self. And that may very well mean the ultimate price. You know when you're willing to die for the Lord, You may not have to, but all he wants is the willingness in you. Have I ever told you about a man named Julio Rubal? How many have not heard that story? Julio Rubal was a mighty evangelist from Colombia, uh, from Bolivia. He went to a Catherine Kuhlman service in Los Angeles, Dion. He wasn't saved, young man. He couldn't get into the Shrine Auditorium, so he was outside with thousands of people. He decided, Aaron, to get a chair and stand up on the chair and preach the gospel. He got saved while outside with the crowd, just got saved. He was just in in his 20s. He got up and began preaching. He went from not even knowing the Lord to preaching within minutes. He was a Catholic. He grew up in a Catholic church and knew enough about the Bible to at least preach some of what he knew. They began getting healed to his shock. Somebody runs in and tells Ms. Kuhlman, there's miracles happening out there. There was 10,000 people outside the shrine who, who, who were getting healed with Julio preaching, who just got saved. So now Ms. Kuhlman puts him on her program. The whole world got to know who who he is. I invited him to come be with me. He came. And he sat next to me in California. Now this was years later when he became so famous that that the president's wife in Bolivia got saved in his meetings. He was packing stadiums in South, uh, in, in Central and South America. He came to the U.S., and I had him come and be with me. Beautiful wife, two little children. 
They're sitting across the way in our studio. Nobody in the studio except his wife and the two kids. We used to tape on Monday mornings for This Is Your Day. And once a month, I'd have a big uh, group of people come and sit in the studio and so on. But every Monday, we would tape. He looks at me and says, the Lord told me I'm going to that I have to go to preach the gospel in Colombia to the drug lords and they will kill me. He said, I have to go and preach the gospel to the drug lords in Colombia, South America. I said, the Lord told you they're gonna kill you. Oh yes, he said, and it's my joy. I said, Julio, you have two children sitting here listening to this. He said, they all know that. And your wife, he said, she knows that too. I said, why would you want to do that? He rebuked me in a loving way, respectfully. He said, come on, Pastor Benny, what are we in this for? And I began to weep. He went down to Colombia. Two years later, Thousands were born again through his ministry in the prisons. He was going inside the prisons, talking to the drug lords and the people in there. He, he was having massive meetings in Colombia, South America. Look him up, Julio Rubal. They killed him. He made Fox's Book of Martyrs. The last edition, his name is in there as one of the martyrs, willing to die for Jesus. There's a lot of people around the world who have been killed for the, for, the, for the faith. They're killing them right now in Iran for the faith. In China and other parts of the world. Persecution is so intense. And they're living Matthew six, uh, 16. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up that cross and follow. That's real Christianity. Now surrender. Would you read for me 1 Corinthians 2 9? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what awaits those who are willing. It's just say, Lord, I am willing. Maybe I'll never be have the privilege to be another Julio. But I'm willing. If it means my life, I'm willing. Go ahead, please, Dion. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them who love him. Think about it. I hadn't seen, ear hasn't heard. No one knows what God has prepared for them who are willing to live that kind of life. Those who love him will live that kind of life. Oh, I love Jesus, I love Jesus, but oh, uh, no, no, I'm not going to go over there and get killed. Oh, yeah, I love the Lord with all my heart, but, ah, self gets in there and stops you. That's not Christianity. All the apostles, Lord, they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to be whipped and beaten. Why did God use Miss Schoolman? And I talk about her a lot because she had such an impact on my life and many uh, like me. I'm going to ask all of you this year to do something. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. How many have? How many have not? Please read it. It will, it will, it will uh, remove the scales off your eyes in a way. Where well, you're going to see the price that many have paid. Most of us will not have to pay that price. As long as we're willing to pay, that's all he wants. So a friend of mine, Dr. Ralph Wilkerson, had the biggest church in California at one time, uh, right ac across from Melody, uh, from, sorry, from Disneyland. His church was called Melody Land. And he had 15,000 every Sunday back in the 70s. I used to go preach for him. And he and I became dear friends. And he and I became neighbors later. He said, I want to give you something before God takes me home. He hands me a copy 
a Fox's Book of Martyrs that Catherine Kuhlman owned. Old copy. Almost all torn up. And I opened it. And I saw with her handwriting, Dear Jesus, give me the privilege to be one of them. And I looked at, at Ralph and said, That's why God used her. She wanted the privilege. So, we read in Ephesians 3.20, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or even think. That is reserved for those who will walk that kind of life. But look, it's a process. You're not going to get there in one day or one week or even one year. The willingness to surrender. You have to surrender on a daily basis. If a wicked king like Ahab said, all I am, all I have is yours to another wicked king, can't we say that to our Heavenly Father? Of course we can. Now, the Lord knows many of us have tried to surrender and failed miserably. He knows that. And we've condemned ourselves because we could not find the secret. How do I do it? I want to surrender, but how? How do I get to the place I can yield to the Lord completely, daily? We all want to live the kind of life like the Cody Booms and the uh, Basilia Schlinks and the David Duplessis and the Derek Princes and the greats of the past. Some of them I knew Personally, they really walked with God, like David Duplessis. Many of you don't even know their name. That man shook the world. He called himself, I'm the Lord's slave. I'm the Lord's slave. He was from South Africa. A short man with power. He knew how, what it meant to surrender every day. I can talk about Miss Kuhlman, I can talk about Corey and others. These were amazing examples always that it is possible to live that kind of life and be fulfilled in Jesus completely. So the Lord knows we want to, but we don't have what it takes. So, you cannot do it. It's never going to happen by self-effort. It's never going to happen by self-will. It's never going to happen by self-confidence. It's not in you to be able to surrender because self doesn't know how. Paul the Apostle found out long ago that he could not do it because he said in Romans 7, 18, he said, for to will is present with me, but how to perform it, I don't know how. I want to surrender. It's, it's in my heart. I have the will, but I don't know how to do it. So how do I do it? Why? Romans 7, 24. Because in our flesh dwells no good thing, and he called himself wretched. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of destruction? Who will set me free from this thing that wants to destroy me? This body of death and destruction. And he gives his answer. All right. Here's the answer. I'm going to show you something. Let's go to Romans 8.13. This is the key. This is the key. Robert, can I have some beautiful, quiet, heavenly music? Not too loud, not too soft, just right. No piano either, just strings. Take us to heaven now a little bit, will you? Good, I love it. 
So let's look at Romans 8, 13, and I want Lily to pay attention to this because the Lord didn't even experience, baby. So put it on the screen, Romans 8, 13. And I'd like Dion to read that for a minute, but we're going to pay close attention to, to this verse, okay? For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. If you live after the flesh, what the flesh forces you to do, what the flesh forces you to say, and how the flesh wants you to act, you'll die. But, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, this is very important. Ye shall live. Yeah. If you now watch these words, but if you through the Spirit, it involves you then. If you through the Spirit, the only one who can put the desire in us is the Holy Ghost. We have no desire to surrender. All the songs I've heard people sing, I surrender all. I sometimes wonder, do they even know what they're saying? They want to, they want to. But it's not true. It's not spiritual. It's flesh. It's flesh. The flesh can imitate the spirit so good you think it's the real thing. The flesh can sing and praise and preach, but the flesh is dead. I was teaching on worship yesterday that I'm going to air in a few days. And I said something that I want you all to know. You can thank the Lord because He's good. Why? Because you know what goodness is. You've, you, you've seen good people. So it says, thank you for his good. I can understand goodness. So I can thank him. Praise him for his greatness. I can understand greatness so I can praise him. Praise happens without, please hear this. Praise happens without revelation. Thanksgiving doesn't need revelation. I don't need a revelation from God to thank Him because I can see it all, all, all around me in the goodness of the Lord, in the food He gives, in the sunshine, on and on and on. Do you know that the greatest symphonies have been written when people have been in the most beautiful places on earth? Lily, I went to Mount Sinai one day, twice in fact. Now, I did not know this would happen to me. So we're climbing Mount Sinai and they tell you to show up at 11 p.m. Because in the daytime, people faint. It's so hot. At night, it's nice and cool. So we show up, Lily. Lily and Lily, wow. We show up at 11 p.m. and we start climbing, 9,000 feet. And the way is about from here to where Jesse is. That's all. And you, and you were climbing. Yeah, huh? The road, yeah, a little, little, little just narrow thing. You just go like this all the way up. So now we're climbing. I saw, Aaron, the Milky Way with my own eyes in the Sinai because there's no pollution. Now all the people with me, there was about 10 or more of us, we all, all began to sing with every Thing inside of us we were singing like madmen and now let the we were just going crazy because nature moved us the beauty of the earth and the universe moved us to sing to the Lord and we began saying give thanks we began just like screaming it give thanks with a grateful heart and we were crying climbing Mount Sinai because in us there is that machine that just is loosed when we see beauty. Suddenly you go to an ocean, ah. Why do people look at the ocean when they're troubled? Go, go look at the lake, why? It, 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 it moves you. It, it, it allows you to, for, to forget your, 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 your problems. A doctor told me years ago, he said, when you feel stressed, just go and look at, the, at, at creation, just go look at the flowers. Yeah, why? Because there's beauty that moves you. You forget all the troubles of life. Ah, just look at those waves. Go to the beach and other places. Most of you have not been to Lausanne, Switzerland. I have. I was there for three weeks. 
I went to Lake Geneva. I thought I was in heaven. Switzerland, the most beautiful country on earth. It's way nicer than Florida. <laughs> I'm standing on the Alps, looking down Lake Geneva. What happened? Same thing, I began singing. I mean, I was singing, screaming with tears flowing down my, my face. Because greatness moves you to praise. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. I don't need a revelation to praise Him. I just have to look at the sky or the ocean or the mountains or the beauty of the earth. But to worship Him, I need a revelation of His holiness. We thank Him for His goodness. We praise Him for His greatness. We worship Him for His holiness. But holiness has no parallel on earth. I can look at goodness and greatness, but, but there's no holiness around here. What can you look at that's holy? So there's no revelation for goodness, because I can see it. No revelation for greatness, I can watch it. But holiness, I have no place to find it on earth. It has no parallel on earth. It's God. So I can thank Him when I see His goodness. I can praise Him when I see His greatness. I can only worship Him when I see Him. Only when I see Him. And then and only then can you surrender. You cannot surrender to one you cannot see. Worship is what brings surrender. You cannot surrender when you have all the troubles running around you and madness and distractions all through. Uh -uh, you can't surrender. You have to be still. Still. Go, go to Isaiah 60, 28 for a second. You have to be still. A place of tranquility. A place of beauty. Would you read that for me? Here, yeah, let, me, let me see. I may have given you the wrong scripture, but it's all right. We all. But what, what the Bible says in Isaiah, in, in, in Isaiah, there's no violence there, no destruction there. It's tranquility for the Lord is seated on his throne. In God's presence, there's tranquility. So when you worship, you cry. Worship does not need melody or words. This is from the heart. In worship, we are, we are still. And in that stillness, Nathan, we surrender. You can't surrender when you're all messed up with something going around you. You just can't surrender. So I've had preachers, big name preachers have said, how do you surrender on that platform? Ah, I said, the only God can show you that. And here's my answer. When Jesus becomes more real than your life, then you surrender. When Jesus becomes more real than your disease, then you're going to get healed. When Jesus becomes more real than your chains, you'll be, you'll be free. When Jesus becomes more real than the bondage in you, you'll be delivered. And then you surrender. So surrender is easy when the Lord is present. So the Holy Spirit, let's, let's go back to that verse of Romans 8. 13, uh, the Holy Spirit brings us to that place where the Lord becomes more real than our own life. And then we surrender. So it says, for if you live after the flesh, you'll die. But if you through the Spirit put to death, that's what the word mortify means, put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So here's what you, here's what you say and do. Holy Spirit, 
We have to talk to him because we need him for that. Because it involves you allowing the Holy Spirit to help you mortify. The Holy Spirit will not put the deeds of the body to death. You do through him. Say, I do through him. It means partnership, Kathleen. It means oneness. It means you talk to him and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Please help me crucify my flesh because I don't know how. Holy Spirit, help me deny self because I don't know how. Holy Spirit, help me put to death the deeds of this body of destruction because I don't know how to control it. Remember, I can resist the devil with the word, he'll flee. But the only way I can put the body to death is by allowing the Holy Spirit to give me that ability to do it. But for that, I have to ask him to help me do it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Because, you see, we... Only he can give us even the real desire to do it. Only he can do that. In the world... There are two spirits at work, God's spirit and the world's spirit. And that's in 1 Corinthians 2, 12. It talks about the, there's this, the spirit of God and the spirit of the world. The spirit of the world controls the flesh. The flesh is controlled by the spirit of the world. But the Holy Spirit controls our human spirit. So, Julia, right? That's your name, darling? By the way, I was listening to you sing on the way here. You're wonderful and very anointed. I love you. But the thing is, we surrender spiritually. Aaron, we cannot surrender physically. That's impossible because the flesh doesn't know how to do that. It can sing the song but not do it. So we say, Holy Spirit, help me. Me, spirit. The real me is spirit. The real me is not a body. My body is only my tent. The real me is not my soul. The real me is my spirit. Help me spiritually put this flesh to death. He'll give you the desire and the ability to do that. And then you'll see the change. And then he'll even give you the ability to be pliable. He'll dismantle out of you the things that the world had placed inside of you. Believe me, it happened to a whole lot of people. One, one of them was Billy Graham. One of the most amazing uh, documentaries today on that you can download is, is his life. And he talks about how he had a challenge. Because a friend of his, who was a preacher from Canada, began to put doubt in his mind about the Lord. And he went through a, to a forest and got on his knees and put his Bible on a tree that was uh, on, on a stump of, 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 of a tree. And he said, Lord, there's a lot of things I don't understand in, in, in your word, but I trust you. And there he died. And that death, that surrender made Billy Graham, Billy Graham. Catherine Kuhlman died in Southern California on a dead end road where she said she died. Surrendered totally to the Lord. That's why God used her. These experiences are sacred to us. That happened to me years ago, myself, when I surrendered. I was in a car in Canada. And the Lord said, uh, I want you to give up this, this, this. I said yes to all of them. But the last one I couldn't say yes to. I said, please, no, don't ask me to give that up. He said, then I will not use you. And I'll never forget, it was in Pittsburgh a few days later. 
I was on the way to a Catherine, to, to a uh, service of the Catherine Kuman Foundation where I was preaching for him at the time. Miss Kuman had, had gone to be with, with the Lord at the time. I said, Lord, it's yours. A week later, the power of God fell with glory and my life was never the same. But surrender isn't just that one time experience. You live in it. You live in it. Just like salvation, you live in it. Okay. God Almighty, let's, let's put Philippians 2 up there and verse 13. The minute you say, Lord, blessed Holy Spirit, enable me to put to death the deeds of this flesh. I don't know how to do it. Enable me to deny self. I don't know how to do that either. Enable me to carry my cross. I don't know how. At that moment, something will happen to you. Recorded in Philippians 2.13, which you all should know by heart. It is God which worketh in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Now he comes in and it happens so easy. Why? Because all you have become is a broken, yielded vessel to the Lord. And he does the rest. It's that inner self. God comes into that inner self, inner being, we call the spirit. We call it the inner self. I don't like that word anymore, self, because self always speaks of soulish things. But that inner man becomes one with the Lord. And now the Lord moves through that spirit, the real you, the real you. And, but there, there will be moments, there will be moments when, when you may have to uh, pray what that dear man in, in Mark 9 prayed, Lord, I believe, but help me when I don't believe. Help me when I have a problem surrendering. Help me when I have a problem with something I just don't understand. I believe, but help me when I don't believe. Don't leave me. And he'll do that. Hmm. So what this verse says is God will work that surrender in you, Jess. God will work that surrender in us if we simply let him. It's a simple message, but I think we need it so much uh, this time in, in, in our life. But let me, let me paint you a picture. Can you uh, play for me, You Are My Hiding Place? Here's Peter. Uh, Peter was a very honest man. Peter was a good man, meant well. And, and he determined to be the best Christian among his, the disciples of the Lord. So think, think about Peter. He was the one who said always, all right, Lord, I'm going, I'm with you. He, the Lord comes walking on the, on the water. Lord, can I come? Yeah, 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 I can do it. Very honest, full of self-confidence, good heart, good man, wants to be the best for the Lord. He steps out and walks on that water. As long as he saw the Lord, he was fine. But when he was distracted, whoop, he was gone. Help me, Lord. That's what happens to all of us that's, that surrender. We can walk on water and then, ah, 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 then he picks you back up again and you're back on top. And the same man discovered later it was impossible because this Peter 
who was willing to leave his father's business and leave his life and follow the Lord all the way and left those boats full of fish and said, yes, I'm coming. That same Peter that received that amazing revelation, you're the Christ. And then rebukes the Lord when he talks about the cross. And the Lord puts him back in place and says, now listen here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm to tell you something. Because when he said, you're not going to the cross, he said, listen, if any man will come after me, we just read it earlier, deny self and pick up that cross and follow me. He put him right back in his place. But that man, Peter, meant well. That same man did not understand, did not know he would fail. The same man who said, Lord, I'll die with you. I'll go to the cross with you. Oh, no, no, I'll never deny you. I'll never, no, no, not me. He denied him. The same man who said, I'll go to prison with you. I'll, I'll die with you. But there was something about Peter. Would you, would you read Luke 22, 61? There was something about Peter that was really amazing. He knew how to yield. He knew how to repent. And he qualified for someone who later surrendered completely. Here's a guy who said, I'm ready to surrender and do this and do this and die with you and go to prison. I'm, I'll go all the way for you. I'll never deny you. He had the will, but not the power. Like Paul said, to will is present, but how to do it, I don't know how to, to perform. But look at this verse. After he denies the Lord, read that verse. Put it and, on the screen. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. Stop, stop, stop. And the Lord looked upon Peter. Their eyes met. That was a beautiful moment. They had that look. Jesus looked at him and Peter looked at the Lord. There was a connection there, Jose. And that meant everything to the Lord. And it says that Peter remembered the word of the Lord. And then the next thing it says, would you read the next verse? He looked and remembered the word of the Lord, how the Lord had said to him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me and thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. That man knew how to repent. And people cannot surrender if they don't know how to repent. Are you listening? You can only surrender if you say, Holy Spirit, do the work in me. I can't do it. And be able to repent. God loves a broken heart. He'll not despise a broken spirit. What a moment that was for Peter. And how beautiful. Can you play for me, Jesus all glorious? If you don't, just play Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place then. And the most beautiful thing, Jess, is after the Lord rose from the dead. And there's Peter. See, it was all transformed when he wept bitterly. When their eyes met, 
was over. So the Lord now is risen from the dead, not one mention of, you bad boy, you. You denied me, huh? Not a word. What did Jesus say? Do you love me? Oh, what a redeemer. He never rebuked him or reminded him or mentioned it. Never one, one time said, you bad boy, you. No, 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 no. Do you love me? And that man became Mr. Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, he shook the nation of Israel. The same man who denied him now confessed him with all his heart, willing to die. Telling the house of Israel, you crucified him. We will not obey what you say. We will obey what he says. That man was a changed man. What happened? He surrendered. He just surrendered. When did he surrender? Let's go back to it. Luke 22, 62. 61 and 62. He surrendered, Amy, right there. Because his heart came right through when those, when their eyes met. So can we look at that verse again, please? All right. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. And the next thing you read now, with Peter I mean is, and he went out, next verse, he went out and wept bitterly. What does that say about Peter? He said, I will not deny him again. And Jesus says, feed my sheep. That's the greatest privilege you can ask for. Lift your hands, Lord. Help them get there this year. Help them get there. Give them the will. Give them the desire to truly yield, to truly surrender to you. Work that work in them that they cannot work on their own. They have no ability. We don't have it. We just don't know how. Only you can work that in us, Lord, this year. I give you the praise. I give you the praise. The Christian life, saints, doesn't say, try. Try harder. No, it's not in the Bible. Never one time did God say to us, try to live the Christian life. Never once. It's not about try. The word in Christianity is not try, it's yield. Yield your members as instruments of righteousness. It's not about trying to, because when, when you try, you fail. Try is self. Yield is spiritual. Can I say that again? Trying is flesh. Yielding is spiritual. When I try, I'm using my physical abilities and soulish abilities to do something. And God rejects that. So Kathleen, the world says, try. Try again. Try harder. So you have these people all over the world in different religions that are trying, including Christianity, but they're not saved. Trying to please God in some way. Trying. Some whip their bodies to bleed. Others fast for hours and pray for days and hours and lock themselves up in a monastery somewhere in some mountain in the desert. They punish their own body. 
I like what Paul said in, in Colossians 2. He said, he said, listen, he said, if you're really dead with Christ, why are you bound to do's and don'ts? If you really are dead with Jesus, why are you obeying the don't and do and don't touch and don't do? Uh, he said, they have a form of wisdom. But all they do is satisfy the flesh. Read it there in Colossians. It's all flesh. So Lord, I surrender. Okay, but it's spiritual. I can sing it, but it's spiritual. Real surrender is spirit. Nothing more. Yield your members as instruments of righteousness. I give you praise, Lord. Lift your hands to heaven. Can we all stand up, please? And we need him today. We need the Holy Spirit more than ever. So please, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome. Would you, would you put your hand on your heart? Because where is he welcome? We're not welcoming, welcoming him to a, an auditorium. We're welcoming the Holy Spirit into our life. One more time. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace Thou art welcome For in thy presence there's healing divine. No other power can heal, Lord, only thy. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome, Omnipotent Father. Feel all the hungry and the thirsty within. Restore us, sweet Father. Revive us once again. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Thou art welcome. Omnipotent Father. Mercy. Thou art welcome. Thou art welcome. In
I worship you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, all the glory, glory to the Lamb. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. You're the Lamb upon the throne and unto you we lift our voice in praise you're the Lamb and glory everything you are my own you are my everything both great and small you gave your life for me you gave your life for me made everything new you are my everything Lord I love you you are my everything you are my all you are my all you are my everything both great and small you gave your life for me made everything new you are my everything lord i love lift your hands to him say Touch your people, Lord. Touch your people, Lord. Work that surrender in all of us. In every one of us, Lord. Fulfill our greatest desires. Deepen our walk. Inflame our hearts with love for you. Jesus. 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 
Jesus There is something Fragrance after the rain, Jesus, Jesus. My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, by seraphs and angels in heaven adore, I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful Wonderful Lord, and help us this year to turn our eyes upon Jesus. Look for in your wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory. Now sing it to him. I want to turn my eyes upon Jesus. Look for in your wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glory. Can you just lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost? Your name is wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Shh. You are the mighty King. Master of everything. Your name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, you're the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God, are you? We bow down before you. We love and adore you. Your name is wonderful, Jesus. I want you to pray in the Spirit just for another two minutes. As I minister to the Lord, you just pray. Your name is wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Your name is wonderful, 
Jesus, my Lord. You are the mighty King, Master of everything. Your name is wonderful, Jesus, my Lord. You're the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God, you are. We bow down before you, love and adore you. Your name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Give me your hand. No, give me your other hand. Your hand. I want your other hand. Yes. Your name is wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Your name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, you are the mighty King, master of everything. Your name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord, you're the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God, you are. We've come down to bow before you. We've come to love and adore you. Because your name to us is wonderful. Jesus, our Lord. The Lord tells me he is going to give you a strong spine spiritually. You're going to need it. And strong shoulders. You're going to need it. Because you're about to carry a burden you've never had before. And so, Lord, give her that ability. Strengthen her spiritual spine. Increase her spiritual shoulders. Yes, Lord, she needs you. The task is great. Add for her. Before the end of the year, she's going to look back and be amazed at what you've done. Because you've done it. And you'll do it again and again and again. Ryan, peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above to you. He'll sweep over your spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. Now these songs I'm singing are prophetic for you and your husband because you're going to see how wonderful he will be through you. Because the things he will do are going to amaze you with wonder. You're going to say, I didn't do it. I won't even know how to even do it. God is about to bring gifts out of you you did not even know you have. 
He's about to do things through you. You, you did not even know you, you could do. You can look back and say, Lord, you're so wonderful because you did it. And your reward is great. Your reward is great. And you'll not weaken because this man next to you will give you peace, peace, wonderful peace. And Ryan, you're going to experience it. Coming down from your Father above, He'll sweep over your spirit every day of your life. And I pray He'll do it with fathomless billows of love. Because your wife will need your peace because the storm she's about to go through, only God can carry her through them. You talk about property and buildings and details. I can tell you this. God will give you what he gave a man named Bezalel in the Bible. The gift it took in Bezalel's life to construct the tabernacle. Because this is not going to be just another sanctuary. This is going to be literally orchestrated by the Holy Spirit as a habitation of His presence. And you're going to need Ryan's strength and the peace he will walk in in a deeper way than he's ever known in his life. Get ready. The Lord has hand-picked you for this. He's hand-picked you for this. Sometimes God will choose the most unlikely people to do the greatest things for His kingdom. And you're one of them. Lift your hands and thank Him. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Judah, come here.
Jesus' name, we will not allow any more pain here, but strength for our Michael. Touch Michael now, Lord, where he is. Strengthen his body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Strengthen my precious chest. And the staff you gave them. And you're going to give them even more. The praise. Before you all go home, just play whatever the Lord leads you to. I, I had a dream about this church a few days ago. I was standing here and I saw the, the place filling up very quickly. And I said to Jessica, I said, I want to see where the line stops, where the crowd stops out there. So I walked down this aisle, out that door, out that side, and suddenly I'm in a different place. It was beautiful. I see this wide boulevard. I see people coming and I'm walking and they're still coming. But as they were coming, they were, they were coming in small groups at first. And the more I walked, the thicker the crowd got. Now I come to what looked like a bridge, very beautiful wide bridge, with like, looked like a heavenly atmosphere beyond. So I'm walking on the bridge and I see now the bridge packed with people coming from everywhere. And I woke up and I called Jess and Michael. I said, I just had a dream that I know is prophetic for you. God Almighty is going to increase you, but you're going to have a great responsibility to stay pure, godly, focused on Jesus only, no one else, nothing else. And you're going to see that coming. And you told me you had a similar dream or a vision prior. I don't know how long ago you had it, baby. When, 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 when did you have that? Five years ago. Yeah. So expect great things. And while I'm standing here, the Lord said, you go and pray over Carla. And I noticed she had gone to do some job. I said to Ryan, let, let your wife come back. And, and the Lord said, I'm going to strengthen her spine spiritually. And I'm going to strengthen her shoulders because she's about to carry a much heavier load than she realizes. And Ryan, you're going to be a peaceful, calm. Uh, uh, the effect on her from me will be just very like, Oh, my husband is here. You leave her a lot of peace and comfort. But you too are going to be very busy, busier than you realize. But I can see you in different places. And the Lord is just doing it himself. So thank you for letting me come on the first Sunday. It was not supposed to be happening. I was supposed to be home enjoying my self <laughs> and she said today daddy you need to come because Michael is not feeling well so I had to hurry up didn't even fix my hair right <laughs> but I came and I love you, you. Love you and I love you too <laughs> bye bye uh, can we just let him know how much we love him With that, we're going to say, and, and, oh, he's and, and uh, you, you, don't, you don't know this, but Michael and I made a decision. I'm speaking at school this Wednesday. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. 2.30, the afternoon session. Okay. Hey, wait, wait. If you're not a part of Jesus School, you're missing out. You, you better join. It's that good. Shalom. Shalom. All right. Love you guys. We will see you next Sunday morning and Sunday night. Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. Local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the 
beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into Children's Church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. 
Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.